Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil mursalin Muhammadin al-amin amma ba'd. Today uh, alhamdulillah we have uh, a very important brother uh, with us Muhammad Dr. Muhammad Yahya. Um, and so we're going to talk about the current situation and what's going on in the world and he is somebody who actually has his own YouTube channel. I'll put a, a link to his YouTube channel definitely describe to it uh, subscribe to it um because you know if tomorrow they take away my channel you need other avenues we need to know about each other and, and you know be able to um uh, be uh, interconnect with one another so i'll put a uh, a uh, a link to his channel inshallah definitely subscribe to his channel inshallah uh dr muhammad uh, uh tell us a little bit about yourself this is the first time that my audience will be um listening to you and um, and then you can you know go ahead inshallah share with us what you feel is important inshallah okay jazakumullah khairan alhamdulillah first of all shaykh i'm uh, honored to be on your channel okay uh, i've been following you for probably about 3 years on and off okay oh, wow. sure. yeah uh, but i've been quite silent you know uh, occasionally i used to comment on your channel okay but uh, mashallah, uh, what I what I like about your channel is that alhamdulillah you're targeting the intellectual Muslims, okay, the educated Muslims, which is uh, uh, which is what we need to do, you know, to get get the educated masses on board, okay. So alhamdulillah, I'm I'm, I'm honored and uh, I thank you for uh, letting me have a platform on your show. Jazakumullah. Uh, my my background, uh, I've uh, I have a PhD in air transport planning. So that basically covers uh, uh, airlines and airports and all the other auxiliary services within the air transport field. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I've spent uh, uh, 25 years now working for airlines uh, in the aviation field. Mashallah. I've, uh, I've spent 20 years of my uh, time in the Middle East, uh, working in Bahrain and uh, the Emirates, mm -hmm. um, uh, and now I'm back in UK. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I also work as a uh, academic uh, teaching aviation uh, but to pilots and people who want to learn about the airline business. So that's my uh, background. Mashallah. Mashallah. Uh, what is the future of the airline industry with, uh, you know, it, it keeps getting hit and then it keeps, you know, obviously uh, you probably know more, but uh, what is the future do you see? of the yeah. airline industry? <laughs> That's a very uh, interesting question. <laughs> What's the future of the Asian industry? Okay. Uh, actually, actually, it's quite bleak, okay, to be frank. Okay. Um, the, the airline industry is a volatile industry uh, compared to other industries, okay? Mm. Uh, because when you have things like uh, 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 pandemics, wars, earthquakes, any natural phenomenon, it's the airlines that really uh, pull back uh, before other industries. Okay, mm. so so uh, airline industry uh, generally is a volatile industry anyway, and it's also dependent on the uh, economic growth of the world economy. It's it, it's in line with that. Okay, mm. so now that we have uh, uh, this um, uh, virus or the uh, idea of the virus going around, <laughs> okay? so this is obviously causing uh, massive havoc in the airline industry. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, so the future is is not uh, very bright, uh, quite frankly. The reason being, the world economy is not going to get back to normal. That's why. Hmm. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, in your country, in the states, there's probably about 60 million now who are unemployed. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when when people are unemployed, they don't have disposable disposable income. The first thing they do is cut back on travel. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and also with the additionally with all these uh, restrictions now, you've got to have certificates, COVID certificates to travel, okay? You've, right. got to go through, you've got to go through so much screening, uh, so much grief. Uh, I mean, after 9-11, you've kind of disappeared, Sheikh. I cannot see you. Yeah, uh, it's better when I see you, so I, I, it looks okay. like I'm no talking. Yeah. Okay, so even after 9-11, we had all these uh, measures coming in, okay? Uh, like the security measures were intense. Um, things that you can carry, what you cannot carry, and the, and the processes that passengers have to go through. Now, air, tra air travel generally, uh, it started off as a glamour uh, glamour activity, you know? Mm. Uh, people flying on an aircraft, tra traveling on an aircraft, it was like 
for a common man, it was like almost taking a flight to the moon. Mm. But, but after 9-11, uh, with all the restrictions, uh, with all those uh, draconian measures that they put in, uh, mm. and, and the process that you had to go to airports, I mean, uh, it's humiliating, uh, you know, with your hands up and they search you all over, take your shoes off, belts off, empty your pocket. So the whole experience t started to turn into uh, a nightmare experience. Okay, mm. but but now it's it's that nightmare level is going to the going to another level. Okay, mm. so putting all this into perspective, the the future is quite bleak. Mm. As, as as is the case of the world economy and the world in general. Yeah, yeah, but like you said, the transport industry gets hit first, which is correct. You know, you know when you look at Sultan Quraysh, like for example, li ila fi Quraysh ila fihim. It's, it was the traveling of, of different routes that allowed business to occur, right? And it's so interesting how traveling is related to fear, in a sense, right? So you have li ila fi Quraysh ila fi mirhdat al shita wa saif, fali abudu rabba hadha al bayt al ladi atamahum min juu wa amanahum min khawf. Who kept you from fear? Because if you if you if you have fear then you're not going to travel, you're not going to invest, you're not going to do business, you're going to hunker down. You're going to like stay where you are, which is not going to allow the economy to grow. And so Allah is reminding the Quraysh here, look, I've allowed you to travel, you know, even though they are these two superpowers, the Byzantine and the, and the, and they can't travel with the same freedom that the Quraysh was allowed to travel because they had good terms with both of them. And, and both of them had to go through the via the desert. So, in order to stay away from fear. And so uh, Quraysh had a very significant position. But the point here is obviously uh, that uh, now the routes have been closed and the fear has been increased, which means that's going to affect the business and the business investments. Uh, so, I mean, that's uh, the fact that that is mentioned in the Quran uh, to me then because of the way I like to think about things, the fact that this is mentioned in Quran then therefore means if we're seeing the opposite of that now, then that is a very significant um, thing that will uh, impact the economy, not just in terms of what will happen in the future, but in general, right? It, like no matter when it happened, it would be terrible. So, yeah. So, Dr. Muhammad, um, I know you've done videos on a whole sort of uh, spectrum of subjects. So <clears throat> uh, I'll leave it up to you. What's in your heart, what you want to discuss, and then I'll interject with uh, my two cents every so often, inshallah. Okay. Jazakumullah um, khairan again. Uh, uh, it's mind-blowing, Sheikh, how, how I gave you the concept of the air transport and the background, and then you linked that with uh, uh, the Quraysh and, and the Surah, okay? So this is marvelous. Uh, I think the best way that uh, uh, it might be that both of us interact. Okay, you ask me a question, I answer, and then you you give a more uh, tafsir, if you like, for a, more a wider explanation from the Quran and the Hadith. So I think rather than just me uh, saying everything from my side, uh, you ask me questions, I'll answer, and we interact. I think that might be uh, that might be a way forward. Uh, I, I'll just say this though that um, I've always wanted. Uh, uh, you, you see, um, I've, I've worked uh, all my life with corporations, okay, big big companies, okay, big major companies, uh, and you know when you work for major corporations, you're you're tied in in, in many ways, okay. You cannot uh, speak your mind because you're an ambassador to the company, okay. Hmm. So you cannot freely do a lot of things because of uh, uh, the, the contractual bindings you have with the company, okay. Hmm. So uh, I don't have that right now, okay. I can I can talk as a free man. But in the, I've always had this uh, um, uh, desire or an interest to have my own education channel. Okay, hmm. so there's lots of things I wanted to do along the lines. Now, obviously, this lockdown came uh, all of a sudden. Yeah, it was it was like an overnight thing. Within within a couple of days, the entire world was shut down. Okay, hmm. so uh, uh, I just decided that look, you know, I can't hold I can't uh, hold myself back anymore and defer. I'm just going to launch launch right now. Okay, this is so serious okay so i went just started off with my camera and uh, went out on the field and started talking that was my first video yeah but interestingly uh, i was the first one though who actually made this suggestion that is it the is it the doings of the antichrist of the job okay because because you cannot you cannot have a 
lockdown of the entire world, okay, we're not talking about a country, a, a, a town or a city, okay, we're talking about the whole world. And it was so systematic, it was done like the blink of an eye, yeah. So that kind of, that kind of um, um, uh, like a major event, you've got to attribute that to something major, something significant, okay. Mm -hmm. So I made that uh, uh, proposition to my viewers or people who saw my videos. Look, could that be that um, uh, it's the doings of Dajjal, okay? Hmm. So, and then uh, a month after that, uh, Sheikh Imran came out with the video and he actually said, uh, I believe it's the doings of the Dajjal, okay? So uh, Alhamdulillah, I felt comfort in my heart that uh, there was a scholar who validated my uh, assumption, okay? Hmm. Hmm. And then obviously, uh, uh, you're also talking about this almost on a daily basis, okay? Uh, you know, the end times, the Jal, and what's going on currently with lots of uh, uh, issues with the Ummah, plus in general what's happening. So, yeah, I mean, uh, so that's how I got into it, yeah? Hmm. Now, uh, what I intend to do from, from effectively from now onwards, actually, because I've been producing on average, let's say, you might say one a week, okay? Hmm. So I'm going to do a bit more now. Um, just to get a bit more traction and give uh, more information out to people, okay? Uh, most people haven't realized, uh, uh, haven't, haven't realized uh, the danger that we're in. Uh, they haven't realized, and unfortunately, I have to say this, uh, hmm. uh, my overwhelming experience that most of the Muslims are more than the Christians or other people are not aware, okay? Uh, and uh, this is a, a sad, sad uh, aspect that we have to live with, okay? Hmm. Uh, I find uh, Muslims are uh, devout worshippers, okay? So alhamdulillah, you know, people go to the masjid and pray their five times prayers, and they're quite content with that, okay? But beyond that, they're not asking themselves broader questions, okay? Uh, so, um, and that's where we are. So, uh, inshallah, I will try my best to see what I can do to push that. Yeah, um, I think, you know, I've always, I've been thinking recently because, uh, you know, I also have family members and a lot of family members look at me and they're like, what are you saying? <laughs> right? Like, it's like, it doesn't make sense. Like this whole thing with Lebanon happened and uh, I made videos and I was talking to one of my uh, dear relatives. I was saying, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, some sort of new technology or a nuclear weapon. This is not just firecrackers. Right, what happened? It seems more significant. But you go to CNN, you go to BBC, you go to Yahoo, you go to any news site. It's like they're pushing a narrative, um, and you know they 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 are pushing a narrative. So you know he sends me a link to one of the news sites, and I was thinking, okay, you know, uh, how do I explain to the average Muslim, both from the perspective of the ulama? As well as, because, you know, it would be fardul kafaya, by the way, at least, meaning there have to be some people in the ummah who take it upon themselves to understand what the enemy is doing. Not even from the perspective of just the enemy, but from the perspective of knowing what is happening against Islam. It is a, it, it's an essential of the deen that in today's world, there have to be people that, that are, look, the Quran talks about, how many how many times does the Quran talk about the the actions of the enemies, right? Everything from tabbat yada abi lahabim watab to what they were planning before Uhud, what they were planning before Badr, what they were planning before Ahzab, what they what they did during the battles, what uh, rumors they were spreading against the Muslims about the hypocrites, how they were cooperating with the uh, Quraysh, uh, how the people the Prophet had truce with like some of the Jews in, of Medina, how they were breaking the treaty behind the Prophet's back. So this knowledge of understanding what is happening in the world, and this is knowledge that benefits not only Muslims, but it also benefits non-Muslims, because non-Muslims, they need to know that we need to get out of cities too, just as Muslims need to. But the point I'm trying to make here is that this is fard al-kafaya, and the ulama need to be interested in talking to people who have spent time understanding these subjects because if they go to the map because the whole thing is i think you know so when i went thinking about this i'm thinking to myself okay how do i explain so the first question i want to ask somebody that is not in line with me 
is that, okay, do you believe the media? So let's, or do you believe we're in the age of deception? So if the starting point is, okay, 9-11 was deceptive. Okay, if 9-11 was deceptive, then, and the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq were deceptive, then where does that leave us? Okay, so we know we're being deceived. And, uh, and, and so I think that is maybe, Allahu A'lam, but I was thinking that is a good starting point. So when I told this dear relative of mine, I said, do you trust the media? Just, you know, that's the only question that I want to start with. And do you, would you agree with me that we live in an age of deception? And so the answer to both of them is yes. So I, I so that's why I thought, okay, so that is a good start. Because I know a lot of Muslims are struggling that are aware of these things. They're having problems talking to the people at the masjid or talking to their relatives or their, you know, that we need to move. And, and then there's like a block, like, you know, you're going too far. But I think a good starting point is by talking about, do we trust the media or not? Do we trust the information being given to us? Um, and of course, and there's a lot of Muslims that are simply busy and, you know, like corporate America, right? So they're in the corporate world. They, they, they don't have time to really spend uh, doing the research. And, and then the ulama, the ulama really have no idea what's happening underneath their feet. It is very, very similar to what happened with modernity coming into the Muslim world. If you just indulge me a little bit and then you can take me from there. You know, what happened is, you know, we were living in an agricultural society, you know, everything was fine. And then the British take over and they bring their trains and they bring their military in their, the industrial world begins to take over the Muslim world. And it's like the rug was taken away from the, uh, like pulled from the ulama. They didn't know what, wait, what the, you know, they come with this technology and this power and everything. It's like, they didn't know what to do. And, and so there was, you know, different reactions to that. Uh, one of them, you know, the ulama said, okay, we will protect our iman, protect our deen, and we will just kind of like hunker down like ashabul kahf. We will not deal with the outside world. And, this is now repeat. This is now we're in a phase where this same type of thing is going to happen again, where things are changing so much that the rug's going to be pulled from the ulama and from the Muslim world, and we'll be again in a different world almost, right? right? We're going to be again in a different world, not being ready for what was coming, and we'll be like, oh, oh, well, well, what do we do now? And then there'll be different reactions to that. So. Yeah, sorry for saying so much. No, 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 no. It's very enlightening, Sheikh. Uh, your words are baraka. Okay, so it's very enlightening to hear from you. Um, okay, so I've got a few comments I'll, I'll make here. Um, uh, right, the, the, the first one is uh, you've mentioned modernity. Okay, when modernity came, uh, or, you know, or, or the changes that came with the industrial revolution in the Muslim countries. Okay, initially, obviously. Uh, with the ulama, there was a bit of pushback. I know, I know. For example, um, you know, uh, there was a time when uh, the Muslim ulama in India, for example, uh, they, they 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 said, "Look, don't speak English because it's not the language of Muslims." Okay, it might it might impact you to accept um, uh, kufr, so stay away from it. Okay, so obviously we have those examples. Now the situation that we're in now is totally different. Okay, you know, that was a transitory transitory thing from a way of life to another okay we're now looking at a transition from a way of life into prison okay mm. it's totally different totally mm. different okay uh, you know um, I, I you mentioned you talk with your families I, I talk with some of my friends and families um, and they, they they do think like this that I'm way off okay I'm, I'm overreacting I'm not overreacting if they if they look at other people who think like me, okay, and there are lots of people who, who, who are speaking up, okay, they will find that that we're actually uh, congruent. Our 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 conclusions are are, 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 are parallel, okay. Mm. Um, so um, so this one is a transition from a normal livelihood, okay, to a prison, and this is not uh, over over exaggerating the situation. Yeah. So this is the first point. Second. Uh, uh, in the past, we had uh, regional or a particular group of people, you know, targeted. Okay, so you might have, you know, the Muslims in Africa or the African continent, 
or the subcontinent or the Far East. Now, this is a global thing, okay? We've got we've got a global thing going on. It's it's yeah, you are nuts, okay? Yeah. The entire mankind, okay? So uh, Australia now is under total lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure heard, yes. many states in many states in the US are in, under lockdown too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so we've got a situation now where uh, where I am now, we're in we're in uh, uh, much strict uh, not a not a lockdown. But uh, uh, not a total lockdown, but a step near that. Okay, mm. so uh, the rule is here: we cannot have uh, more than two people in our homes, or or somebody from another family. Okay, so it's got to that stage. Okay, Australia is obviously far more uh, you know um, rigorous than this. Yeah, so so th this is now uh, you know going at the next level. So it's the entire mankind. So this has been my first point. Uh, the mankind. So leading on from that, uh, I think you mentioned in your conversation um, how do we how do we now get the message across to the average Muslim? Okay. Uh, what I'm trying to do in my channel, I'm not targeting the Muslims as such. Okay. I've, I've got a bigger net here. Mm -hmm. Problem is bigger, so therefore the the solution's got to be bigger. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm 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 actually keeping it very broad. Mm, uh, sure. To 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 take on board the mankind, if you like, okay. Yes, yes, good. Now, I could have started my channel just focusing on the Muslims, you know, just talking about the Muslim Ummah and the Muslims, and you know, deep into deep into Islamic uh, uh, fiqh and jurisprudence and what the Quran has to say, right? But I've I've taken like a mile, few miles step back, mm. only dropping dropping like God God has sent some books, okay. God has sent some messengers. Mm. God, there is a God. So you know, it's like the very baby steps. Okay, right. got it. Perfect. So, yeah. so, so mm. I'm, I'm, I'm targeting a broader audience here. If I can get, get them on board to accept that, mm. I think, Alhamdulillah, you know, I, uh, Allah may be accepting my effort in this light. Okay. So, the other thing is, you know, um, if we target, uh, like, if we just focus on the Muslims, I mean. Um, the lots of ulamas have done that in the past, you know, the, the lots of great scholars, okay, you know, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, Sheikh Imran Hussein, and there's there's many, many more, you know. Um, they reach a they reach a you know a, a point where they can't push it no more, right? Okay, so my view is that look, let's take the mankind on board, mm. got a bigger audience, and, and and let's let's try to get everybody on board here because mm. the problem involves everybody, okay. So uh, on my channel so far, I mean, it's, a, it's just a, a startup channel, but my subscribers are more Christians or non-Muslims than Muslims, okay? Wow, so, it's actually a great achievement. Yeah, and, and it's, I, it's actually a closer to the Sunnah model in the yeah, sense that, you yeah. know, when Quran first came out, its yes. morals were the ones that like, why do you kill the child girl? It didn't have anything to do with Muslim or non-Muslim. Right, exactly. Quran came out with a series of these things, including when the Lahab, was there, even though it had the call to Tawheed, it had the call to Risala, but its 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 call to morality and social justice was like the wide net you're talking about. It wasn't just about the there was no Muslim Ummah, <laughs> there was only the the wider net, right? right, right. And so, why uh, lil mutafifin? Why do you cheat in the business? Or Have you seen the one who denies the day of judgment? He's the one who pushes away the orphan. Right, and they refuse small kindnesses to each other, neighborly kindness. So you know, Quran is like criticizing that society. It's not talking about a Muslim. It's it's talking about it's 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 trying to help the greater society. It's addressing the issues of the greater society. So in that sense, Subhanallah, uh, if you've done that, that's a. Um, you've uh, hung up, Sheikh, a little bit. Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So, alhamdulillah, Sheikh, uh, uh, alhamdulillah, you've uh, you've, you've uh, shown a light on this. You know exactly. This is exactly the point. Okay. Uh, uh, now, going back to your uh, the other point about the uh, do they trust the mass media or not? You see, a few days ago there was a protest in Germany. Okay. Uh, there was a protest in Germany uh, about wearing the masks. Oh, okay. Uh, One point four million turned up. 1.4 million to protest. Okay? Wow, subhanAllah. Massive protest, 1.4 million. Yeah. 
and the BBC uh, reported it was twenty thousand. Okay, uh, now people have to decide. People have to decide here. Yeah, look, you know, uh, what are you listening to? Okay, but the the the, the, the sad part is that, that overall the overwhelming majority just sit in front of their telly, you know, five to ten ten hours a day and just take all this garbage and nothing else. Okay. So this is where we are. I mean, it, it, you see, what's happened now, um, going back a few decades, okay, if we take um, just, you know, like 1900, two, 2000, uh, just take those 100, 100 uh, uh, centuries as, as uh, milestones, if you like, okay, mm -hmm. prior to the year 2000, okay, uh, we still had kind of nation states functioning, okay? Mm -hmm. Since after that, since after that, and with, after the nine, after nine eleven, basically they started to really push it down. Okay, mm. what we've reached now, effectively, we don't have sovereign states anymore. Okay, Subhanallah. These these are now these are now a branch offices of a single entity. Okay, mm. so there is no more sovereign states. Okay, that's just an illusion. Yeah, and the uh, the smart people, uh, the smart human beings. Okay, the intellectual <laughs> ones. They, Intelligent ones, okay, uh, they've realized this, okay, because they're looking at information from different sources and they're putting it together, okay. So the world is a single entity now, okay. Mm. Now, uh, before uh, the, so when, when we had the nation states, okay, each of the nation states had their own banking system, okay, right. and they had their own uh, media which was quite independent. So the media would often criticize uh, the government or whatever it needed to do, okay. What we have now, effectively, is a single worldwide government. Okay, all the banks are interconnected. Okay, mm. basically, we've got the central banks, and uh, the, the top ones are the Fed, which is in your country, the Federal Reserve, uh, European Central Bank, Bank of Japan. Okay, the IMF, the World World Bank. These five, five or six entities are controlling all the little ones. Okay, mm. so you've got all the banks, you've, all, you've got all the governments in in uh, hand in hand. Okay, they're all part of the single entity. Plus the plus the government mainstream media, okay. Mm. So they've got oh by the way uh, and the military too, okay. Mm. They've been bought out, okay. You see what's going to happen going 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 uh, uh, in the future? There will be uh, social unrest and riots. Uh, sooner or later, people will realize that th this is turning into blatant fascism and draconianism, okay. So there will be a bit of pushback from people, all right. The 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 way the, the way they will quash this uh, pushback it is through the military okay even the police will not be enough uh, because they, they haven't got the numbers okay mm -hmm. so uh, basically they'll have to bring in the military to quash all of this and right now they're doing this in the states you've got military rollout in in, in many of the states and plus australia the military is out there uh, reinforcing uh, reinforcing uh, you know uh, what the police want to do okay mm -hmm. so uh, uh, so now you've got all of these entities operating as one, right? So that's where we are, and uh, people need to realize uh, how the dynamics are changing. Okay. The other thing is uh, the livelihood. Uh, the livelihood going forward is not going to be the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if there are Muslim professionals who are working working in hospitals, uh, corporations, banks, many many companies. Okay. Uh, maximum probably within a couple of years they'll say to them, "You've all got to vaccinate, otherwise you're not being employed." Okay. So they'll have to take a decision whether to go along with this or not, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there you are. There's all the compulsion coming in. Yeah? And what's interesting is, you know, as I'm talking to, uh, again, my relatives, my friends, uh, those of us that are in corporate America at any level are just hoping when things will go back to normal. There's this conversation, when things go back to normal, when things go back to normal. You know, even the schools, the kids are going to school. So the you know the the teachers meet and the teachers are talking, and the and the conversation is when things go back to normal and and I'm like you know I'm like even for the uh, some of the institutions we have here I'm like uh, there will be no going back to normal you need to make plans based upon the fact of knowing there will be no go, going back to normal, uh, but it's like because they don't want to lose that lifestyle, right? So so there's this like hope. Uh, there's that there's that hope that things will go back to normal but i don't think i don't see things going back to normal at all and uh the sooner we realize that the better <laughs> you know uh 
so you know people are like okay you know like i'll, I'll give you an example um uh, my sister she's uh, she works in corporate america she has a good position she's taking a 50 percent uh, cut uh, pay cut and they, it's they either leave the job or or take the 50 percent pay cut right um but you know there's this hope that okay when things go back to normal everything will be normal and i'm like i don't think so i don't think that's happening you now you you live basically see what you have now and make your decisions uh based upon that but uh yes sorry please no absolutely you're, you're right Sheikh. uh 100 with you on that um They've, they've made it very clear. I mean, if you've looked at uh, your governors in many of the states, okay, uh, there are some YouTube ch channel, uh, you know, people who are awake, they, they put all this together, okay? Now, uh, uh, we've had this, uh, we've had this uh, term, the new normal, okay? Mm. You've know, heard it. Uh, you know, all the governors, all the heads of states, they're, they're all uttering this new normal, okay? So, they themselves are saying to people, "Look, you know, we're into a new, no we're going into a new normal. Hmm. There is not going to be the old normal. That's over." Okay, so uh, if people don't uh, uh, don't want to come to terms with that, uh, that's something that uh, they're blindsided. They're overlooking this, and then the sooner they get, get accept that and move along and prepare how to uh, ride this, okay, the the, the 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 better off they'll be. Okay, hmm. uh, so that's uh, that's the situation. Um, uh, you know, it's it's it's, a, it's in human psyche. You know that uh, when you're used to something, you you aspire for it. Okay, you mm. you value it, you treasure it. Okay, so all these kids, uh, you know, they've gone to school. That was their way of life. You know, uh, and it's quite natural and understandable that they they are asking. You know, when when can we go back or when will we go back? But uh, uh, what they're doing to the system is actually absolutely, uh, absolutely savage. You know, mm -hmm. when you see all these uh, children with masks, okay, they have no idea why they're wearing them. Their parents have told them, look, it's dangerous, wear it, okay. But, uh, uh, you know, growing up in this mask culture, to go around with the masks and not to be able to smile, run around, and they've got all these uh, boxes where they need to stand and hop around, you know. Uh, they, they, the whole thing is turning into a real disaster, real, real disaster. Uh, mm. uh, and there's there's not enough people talking or, or, or uh, pushing back. You know? So when you look at uh, what's happening in the concrete world, when the real world out there, it looks very, very bad. But when you look at the ahadith of the Prophet and the Quran, it looks worse. Meaning, uh, what I'm trying to say is that it, it, you know, the trajectory is going to go more negative than even we may be be able to see, and uh, uh, and and so that that's that's what's really concerning is that you know there can be many outcomes, there can be positive outcomes, there can be negative outcomes, there can be middle outcomes, but the the the, the ahadis seem to be pointing towards a, a negative outcome of all of this. Uh, situation that we're in so yeah it is possible in the theoretical world that no you know why do we have to be so negative why do we have to be so pessimistic true uh but it is negative when we look at uh from the possibility of outcomes yeah there can be some positive outcomes but when we look at the quran and when we look at the sayings of the prophet we already know it's going to be a negative outcome and so this is i think another aspect of um of, of why, you know, people are looking at the world and they realize it's bad, but they're like, okay, you know, we're human beings. It can't be that bad, right? We, we've been fine so far. We've had wars. We've had different issues. So things will, but people don't realize this is different. This is different because it's, it's being, it's, there's a plan. <laughs> I mean, this is being forced and put down. And these are all different litmus tests, different like forms of tests. And each and every test we're basically complying. Australia complying, USA everyone's wearing the mask, everyone's complying. This just gives the the narcissist, uh, the you know the 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 psychopath, the the uh, the leverage of thinking. Okay, I should you know people that are negative when they see they can be negative to other people, they increase their negativity. They're like, okay, I, I slapped him once, he didn't do anything. Well, let me go next time slap him twice. So this is basically what's happening. And humanity is, you know, even though we have these protests in, in different places, there will be some of this. But for the majority of them, they're just going to go with whatever, you know, give me the, my vaccine and let me go back to normal. 
and uh, and and were and this is, but why is it the Muslims in particular? Because I see the non-Muslims are more aware of these things, are able to add things together more. Are Muslims less aware because we are more in dunya than even the non-Muslims, uh, or? Or is there some other reason? Do you think that the non the Muslims are? It seems we're we're blindsided more than even the non-Muslims when it comes to this whole issue. Very very interesting question. Uh, very interesting question. Uh, uh, okay, uh, few answers I have here. Uh, I, I'm also a bit bit uh, bit mind boggled with all of this. Okay, I mean you'd have thought you'd have thought you know uh, Muslims having faith in Allah. Okay. That would be more a bit more aware of uh, what's going on, and 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 should be able to put the pieces together. Okay, uh, one one reason is actually is, is uh, lack of knowledge uh, down to that, and and and, and ignorance amongst uh, amongst the uh, masses. Okay, so uh, the the non-Muslims, you know, they they listen to a lot of radio shows. Okay, uh, good radio shows. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they, they 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 talk to each other, pass messages to each other. Okay, they they, they do these things. I've, I've noticed, you know, more than the Muslims. You know, we we kind of okay, how's your family? Okay, we keep it more on the personal level. Okay, mm. how's your family? Okay, I'm going Pakistan or whatever. You know, it's more on the personal side. Whereas with the, with the non-Muslims, it's uh, their conversation is like, okay, I was listening to somebody else on that radio. This is what he said. You know, so they're they're talking about what's going on. So in that sense, they're picking it up more. Okay. Mm. Uh, the other thing, uh, to illustrate one point, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, Christians, you know, who who are not Christians consciously, but like let's say they their ancestors ancestors were Christians. Okay. But over the last few decades, they they forgot their Christianity and they're not into Christianity. So so Jesus or Christianity was dormant in them. Okay. Mm. It, Subconsciously in their mind, but they're not actively aware about it. Okay. Nevertheless, you know these kind of uh, uh, people uh, in their thousands are talking about Mark of the Beast. Okay. Yeah, that's right. You know, uh, they picked it up from somewhere. Okay. Yeah. And they say, you know, the Bible talks about Mark of the Beast. Okay. Now the, the Quran talks about the battle art, right? Yes. Uh, that's I and the Quran. Yes. Now you can you can you can grab. Uh, 10,000 Muslims and probably not find one who's even heard, who knows what it is, okay? And and probably out of 100 Christians, okay, those who do, who, those who are atheists even, okay, out of 100 of them, probably 80 or 85 of them know the mark of the beast, okay? Mm. So you see, they, they are much more aware uh, and they're able to put it together more intelligently than than uh, uh, than uh, our, our masses, okay? Mm. And Part of that is because I think we're so um, consumed with worship alone, you know. So people are focused on on the ibadah aspect of it. Okay. Mm. So I'll give you an example. A friend of mine uh, sent me a video clip mm. uh, where he said, you know, there were Muslims doing tawaf just before the Hajj. Okay. So just before the Hajj, there were Muslims doing tawaf. Okay. So they were going around in circles, uh, uh, marked out. You know, so they were walking on the lines circular lines and one meter or two meter apart okay so he sent me that video uh, well these Muslims were doing the tawaf and um, he mentioned that um, um, and these Muslims are so lucky that Allah chose them for this ibadah in this time okay people are not able to go to uh, house of Allah and Allah handpicked them to go there okay mm -hmm. so I went back and said you know that uh, uh, Allah loves a stronger believer over a weaker one Okay, he loves both of them. Okay, yeah. And, and I said, you know, Muslims should have some dignity when they go to the house of Allah that they don't go around like a battery-operated robot. Okay? <laughs> that, was, that was my you know, that was my view on that. Okay, and then uh, I don't know if I've upset him or not. He hasn't come back. Okay, so, so there you are. We are we are so so focused on our ibadah aspect. But even our ibadat have been broken now. It's like, yeah. you know, they have, it's like Allah shook up our ibadat. We can't pray in jama'ah properly. We yeah. can't do hajj properly, right? Allah shook up our ibadat to like, kind of like, wake up, guys. It's even affecting your ibadah now. Exactly. You know, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Islam would untie itself, starting with governance and ending in prayer. And this is like, 
our prayers, our Salatul Jama'ah is completely untied. And you know, go, you go to like you go to the masjid, and uh, now people are just standing randomly, <laughs> like literally randomly, right? There's some masjids where they've organized it a little bit better, but some people like the first row, like uh, you know, first row is standing like six feet apart, but the second row that comes, uh, okay, still have like instead of still having some sort of like rows. Then the person behind is not behind the person at all, because now he's he's in the gap area, and then the third row it it looks funny, right? I mean, there's no sense of you know safan uh, marsus or you know like the angels coming down and there's no like rows, the rows have been completely broken, and so, but we keep going in the same direction. Not I mean I thought. When that, when the, when we were the whole ulama, the, we were, they were discussing, you know, the whole issue of the rows, how to do the rows, the six feet. I thought maybe some ulama would wake up and say, wait, what is this? This is going too far. But everyone just towed the line. Everyone went along with it. And, and the same thing with Hajj. No one, no one in the Muslim world was really sad that Hajj stopped. No one, it didn't matter. Really didn't matter. Everyone was, Happy that we got the the you know the 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 church made into a masjid, which is a separate issue. But I'm just simply making a contrast. The contrast that uh, you know Hajj was broken, that didn't affect us, and Salah is broken, it doesn't affect us. And and these are for I'm talking about the people that pray, the people that actually care. And so and you know it's it's funny. Uh, I just recently um, contacted this. Uh, brother he's he's a, i believe a non-muslim uh, even though uh, i don't know so you know he's well known in the world to know about uh what's happening in the world x person right so i i said you know i want to do an interview with you because uh you know a lot about the world so he texted me back yesterday he said um uh he said you can reach me using the contact form on my website finally an interview by a muslim only took 30 years Right. So so this is guy, a guy that's an expert in this situation. He's like, oh, finally, a Muslim wants to interview me after 30 years. And so th that was his response. And so uh, now for the Jewish people, they they knew that the Jewish and the Christian people, if I can just indulge you a little bit, they knew that something different is happening after the 1967 war, the Six Day War. You see, when first made, when the British Empire gave uh, Israel to the Jewish people as a homeland, uh, not as a state, meaning the declaration was as a home. Uh, so, you know, the Jewish people, the rabbis, they were against uh, many, 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 many rabbis. I think it, it was more than 50% of the rabbis were against the establishment of the Israeli state, okay, including Albert Einstein himself, okay. They were all against, but then when after the 1967 war, the, 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 the 10 day war in which Israel defeated Egypt and Syria and Lebanon and Jordan and defeated all these, uh, was it the six day war, six day war, it, it defeated all these uh, Muslim countries. They were like, the rabbis were like, okay, this is the hand of God. This is God working in our favor. Like we beat the odds. Right, they completely decimated the uh, the Egyptian uh, air force. Uh, they, you know, they 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 not only defeated them, they took over their land, which then they later on through treaties gave them some of it back. But they completely decimated them. This is the turning point where Jewish people started thinking in terms of eschatology, and Christian people started thinking in terms of eschatology because they're like. Well, the Jewish people are like, wow, we won a very impossible battle. So God must be on our side. And then the Christians are like, the state of Israel is established. This is, you know, the sign of Jesus coming back. So we need to, to rebuild the temple. So when we build the temple, then Jesus will come back. The Christian world, being religious or not, like you said, they started to make these connections. Even the presidents of the United States, like including Ronald Reagan, one of the great scholars of Islam, he wrote a very interesting book 
on this very topic. He said, Wa'adul Haq wa Wa'adul Batil, the true promise and the false promise. And you know, he, he kind of like didn't go into the kind of details that I did, but his point was, yes, you have promises, because part of their promises is they will all go back to Israel. So they're seeing, oh, we're all going back to Israel. This is, you know, the word of God coming true, the Bible coming true. And the Christians are saying, yes, this is the word of God coming true. And so, you know, the point is, is that we'll see whose words come true in the end, meaning it will be the word of uh, Islam coming true or your prophecies coming true. But because there's a lot of similarities and they see that those similar aspects of similarities, they, for example, Jews, Jews going back to Israel, they see that and they're like, okay, so this is the truth. This is the proof. This is the truth. And so um, so that's that's definitely a big pull that as nation states are falling, when you read the ahadith of the prophet, you don't see nation state scenarios. You see religious scenarios. And that is because the nation states would have failed. And if the nation states fail, what is going to be left of your identity? The only thing that's left of your identity is religion. Right, So even if you're not religious, you're still going to identify with a religion, with a culture, because the religion brings a, you could be an atheist and say, I'm, yeah, I'm an atheist, but I'm with the Christian culture, right? or I'm an atheist, but I'm with the Jewish culture. And, 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 and so we, as nation states fall, as the economies get worse. So here's my question to you. What is the picture you see from, in terms of, uh, how will we, uh, how do you see the next 10 years, the next 15 years? Uh, I think, uh, personally, I think that we're headed towards a great, the, the, the starting point is going to be a great economic depression. And then from there, things will get desperate. And uh, as things get desperate, then, you know, politicians have only one thing to do when things are desperate, call for war, right? Create enemies, create distractions. And so I think that as uh, economies collapse, uh, people will be pointing fingers more at, oh, look at what that country did and look at what that country did and look at what that leader did and what that person did. And that will be leading us towards wars, and especially as nation states fail. I don't know. So I wanted to maybe pick your brain on where you think things are going. Okay, great. Uh, thanks. Thank, thank you for all of this uh, background. Okay, it's, uh, it's fascinating to listen to you share. Okay, I, I must say that. Uh, you, you really expand the thought in different directions. So, Jazakallah, Barakallah, Fiku. Okay. Uh, just to uh, roll back a little bit, uh, on the, on, previously you, you asked me about Muslims. Uh, are, are the Muslims too much into dunya? Okay. So, let me just answer that one and then I'll, 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 I'll carry on with the other points. Okay. Uh, I don't think the Muslims are uh, in dunya in its true sense. Okay, so if we take, for example, where you thabbit akta makum, okay, hmm. Allah's words, okay, I will establish your feet firmly. Okay, now the Muslims, Muslims' feet are not firm nowhere. Okay, no. so we're not into dunya, not we're not into dunya in its true sense. Okay, so we're we're after a false dunya. Let's call it. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, so, so let's let's. Even though we're, we're we're chasing after and spending all our time thinking that we're we're getting dunya, we're not actually nowhere near as much as we should get dunya. Okay, you know. Um, hey, right. Yeah. So, so, okay. So, moving on from that. Um, now, the other thing I think is that um, we are so um, like overconsumed or so dominated. Okay. My Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? So nice. Because obviously, you know, our Prophet is the uh, the last and the Imam al-Mursalin, okay? Uh, his position, his maqam, itself exemplifies where, where he stands uh, in the ranks of the Prophets, okay? Imam al-Mursalin, okay? So because we are so uh, over-consumed, and I think a lot of our ulamas are uh, emotional people rather than more objective and more more looking at things in a more broader way. Okay, so uh, this is why you know we, we our protests on many occasions are still like physical protests rather than rather than writing you know written protests. Okay? Mm. So um, and obviously this is something the Western culture had difficulty with the Muslims in in the West. Okay, that you know we, we're so much into the physical protest rather than intellectual protest. Okay. 
but unfortunately, you know, we 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 haven't produced uh, uh, the kind of scholarship from the young generations required, you know, to 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 confront uh, or to challenge uh, uh, this. Okay, I mean, uh, we, we failed on that on that front too. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so I think because we are so uh, over consumed uh, with Prophet Muhammad, that we we're not thinking beyond that. Okay. So what I mean to say is that, well, the future, the future belongs to Isa al-Islam, okay? Isa al-Islam is the future, okay? Well, you know, uh, uh, there's, there is uh, uh, Surah Al-Maryam, okay? Isa al-Islam is mentioned over and over in the Quran. Uh, Isa al-Islam lived a short, short, short life in his first Nabuwa, uh, but he's the only, only prophet that, that's coming back twice, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Dajjal is the greatest fitna that the world will encounter. Hmm. So Islam will be involved with dealing with the Masihat Dajjal, which is the greatest fitna of entire mankind. So he's a very dominant figure in, in Islam. Very, very dominant figure in hmm. Islam. Okay? Um, I would rank him. I mean, okay, of course, Islam Islam has its way of ranking the prophets, okay? Like Ibrahim al-Islam is like, uh, you know, above Islam, above Islam, above Islam and so on. So forth, and so forth and so on. But Isa al Islam, I would, I would rank him above Musa al Islam, okay, in its current context, okay. So uh, the Muslims are, are nowhere near uh, anticipating or expecting or doing anything about, uh, you know, thinking about the future, okay. So it, it, it ties back in, I think, what, with what you said that uh, I very much like what you said that how the rabbis and the Christians, you know, that they started to link. Uh, the events unfolding with, with, the, with their own eschatology. Okay, mm. yeah, they started to make some link and get in get in position to take advantage of that. Okay, mm. our ulamas are nowhere near that. Nowhere mm. near. That, okay, mm. we're still we're still at uh, you know re read Surah Yasin and get the barakah of Surah Yasin. Okay, we're, you know we're just collecting barakah. Okay, we're not using our aql. Okay, even even though the Prophet Islam says uh, that. Uh, uh, an intelligent believer is hundred a thousand times stronger on shaitan than a devout worshipper. Okay, so what we've done, we've managed to produce uh, some devout worshippers, and like you said, if they are devout, okay, this is the best we've done. We've not really produced uh, intelligent intelligent believers, not not in significant numbers at all. Okay? So, you know, it's interesting when I was in Israel. In 1994, because from Egypt, when I, I, I was when I was studying at Azhar, then I went to uh, it was my chance to go to uh, Israel because they're by border. So I wanted to go to Al Aqsa for Eid, and uh, I had finished my course. So I was like, you know, I talked to the administration. I said I want to go to Eid. I want to go to Israel because I'm not going to have a chance probably to do that again. So you know, they told me how I can get there into uh, Israel. And uh, so I went there. What I found very interesting, the rabbis of Israel were more knowledgeable than the average person. The average person in, in Israel, the average Joe Shmo, didn't know how to speak English. Okay, the masses, they didn't seem to know how to speak English, but the rabbis did. Okay, the rabbis, uh, I could tell from their way of conversation, that they were a lot more intellectual. This is 1994, I'm talking. They, the rabbis were more intellectual than the masses. And in terms of not just religion, I'm not talking, because I wouldn't know who knows more about religion, the average person. Or the, I'm talking about the world in general. They were more well-informed about the world and what's happening. And rabbis, if you look at, how things work in Israel. Rabbis have a very, very, very dominant political role in which they seem to be together. Not like uh, what happens in Bangladesh or Pakistan or India where, you know, one firqa is here, the other firqa is here, you know, one group is here, the other group is here, and they're just, they're, they're with the same secular uh, parties or religious parties vying against one another. Not that level. I'm talking about like, 50 rabbis writing a letter to uh, President Bush, a, a group of rabbis writing letters to, and what you were saying, the intellectual battle, the written battle, right? So you have 
but that was one thing that I, subhanAllah, I noticed uh, is that the rabbis were probably the only ones I saw that were able to speak English with me. Nobody else. And 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 with uh, with our with our with our situation, see when you have parents and children, and the children know how to speak English well, and the parents don't know how to speak English well. What happens is the children disrespect the parents or don't have value for their parents because they see them lower than them. So when you're living in a society where everyone's speaking English and your ulama don't know how to speak English, then they're not well informed. They don't know what's happening in the and uh, and so then that has its you know effects both from the masses as well as then the ulama have to listen to what the masses say. The masses said, "Well, there's a virus." The ulama said, "Okay, there's a virus, right?" And uh, even the even the most well informed scholars are are going to listen to the experts like the doctors because they're also towing the the, the same deceptive line. And so the ulama are like, "Okay," and this is part of our fiqh. That when there's an issue, you have to ask the experts in that field. Well, they ask the doctors in that field. The doctors tell them what they've been told, and so they're they're not they're not informed enough to realize that there's a big deception taking place. And so, um, for example, when I read the fatwa of Mulana Taqi Uthmani on this issue, he told the same line: "Is this what the experts are saying? So this is where we have to go." But it really doesn't take it. You don't have to be a rocket science scientist. I mean, if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Alhamdulillah, many other Muslims have figured it out. It's, it, it doesn't take a genius. Either we're crazy, okay, in which case, Alhamdulillah, we're crazy and the pen is lifted from us. So we're okay. Okay, so we, we don't have any problem, <laughs> inshallah. But if, if the pen is not lifted from us and we know what we're saying and we're well informed and the others are not, the reason for that would be that that we're not towing the law we understand that we are in it we are that people are playing with information and the information and in order to overcome that you have to be more well informed than the information being fed to you anyway i'm sorry i keep saying so much but uh yeah oh no it's uh i i'd, I'd rather listen to you than talk okay <laughs> it's uh it's uh mm -hmm. listen to you uh, on my last video the one that i just made uh released uh, yesterday uh, I actually mentioned, I started off like this. Um, this wasn't part of the script, you know, when I did the video. Sometimes, you know, when you start talking, something momentarily comes in your mind. So this is what happened. So I, I started off by saying that uh, Darwin, Charles Darwin, in his uh, theory of evolution, okay, he started off by saying, like, uh, the survival of the fittest. Yeah. The fittest is likely to survive in its environment. Okay? So I... Uh, took a step from that and I said, look, we're in an information age now, okay? It's not only survival of fitness, it's going to be survival of the intelligence too, okay? Mm -hmm. So people people should uh, be careful on what sources of information they, they, they take on board, okay? And that they that they start taking actions based on true sources of information rather than misguidance. And I pointed out that uh, the, 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 the mass media is blatantly lying to them. It's a, basically, it's a propaganda Propaganda uh, machine now, okay? Yeah. And they're, they're actually saying that they're lying, okay? If you just listen carefully and, uh, you know, uh, scrutinize a little bit, you know you know that they're lying, okay? Uh, Even then, the history of media, see, uh, you remember, me and you remember, that time where the idea of being a journalist, the idea of being a reporter was uh, kind of like this independent reporting, Okay, so you would go to the scene, you would, you would, in a non, the idea was to write a column in a very objective, non biased way where you state the facts. They used to teach you that talk about the five W's when, where, how, well, how was the H, um, why, you know, uh, talk about these in your article. It was a very, they, they tried to make journalism very objective. Now the media outlets have become I ideologues. Right. So if I'm a Republican, for example, in the U.S., I watch the Republican bent channel. I'm sure in England it will be something like, uh, you know, if there is a channel that likes there, there are certain channels that like Boris Yeltsin, yeah, Bor whatever his name is, the new uh, guy you have. Um, the, it, the, the, there's some channels that like him, some channels. That don't. And people go to the channels where they that feeds them the information that they agree with.
right? And so they're, it's almost the media is playing, uh, you know, kind of like this two-party system, right? Or this two-party dictator. And it's all part of the same system. But if you're for Trump, you're listening to Fox News. If you're against Trump, you're going to listen to CNN, right? So it's it went from this objective type of reporting to where the purpose of the media is to feed information according to the ideologies of the people that are li the viewership the I the ideologies of the viewership okay and so now there's that objectivity is gone because the purpose now is to feed biased information and then this biased information is also kind of like a controlled dialectic right so you have the republicans you have the democrats so divide people into these three two groups and give them a sense of freedom uh, you know, freedom of information, freedom of uh, whatever, voting and uh, the electoral process. But it's actually just, a, 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 you know, a two-party dictatorship. Uh, because, uh, you know, if you want true democracy, you should look at Bangladesh, right? Where you have like 20 parties, 30 parties, or, or Pakistan. You know, that, that's more like true. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, the, the media is, is, is my whole point of this, even the Quran, they want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths. This media is an, is is like a really a very clear point where you can see how information is being fed to people on both sides, right? And 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 uh, it's it's and, and it's controlling the people. But anyway, please continue. Yeah, uh, I very much agree with you, Sheikh. Uh, um... Well, in, in the states, you've got uh, you've got this uh, like uh, two-party game going on, and obviously it's controlled uh, at a higher level. Okay, uh, it's been going on, you know, for decades now. Okay, I think it, all these things will come to its uh, uh, natural end with with the convergence of this uh, one-world government. All these things will fizzle out. Uh, in the UK here, um, it's a bit different. Uh, basically, we don't have this uh, media are not necessarily split with left and right wing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so be, because, um, well, uh, the media are just pushing the the government nar narrative now. The government. Agenda. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, so just to illustrate the point, what the BBC said, uh, one point four million. They said the twenty thousand. Okay. You might get other channels saying thirty thousand or forty thousand. Okay. Okay. But no, nobody's going to say that they were one point four million. Okay. So they're all they're all in it together now. Okay. Um, so this is what they're doing. To, to, to go back to uh, your question, Sheikh, uh, the, the future, okay? Uh, I think our viewers might find this interesting, what our views are on the future, let's say the, the next 10, 15 years, yeah? Um, I listened to somebody called Richie Allen Show, okay? Uh, he's a great guy. Uh, he's been doing journalism for about 30 years, and he's, 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 uh, he's a lot of fun. He's got a lot of humor. Hmm. Uh, uh, and he breaks down other people's uh, other people's narratives in steps and exposes, you know. So Richie has about uh, two million followers globally. If you just type in YouTube Richie Allen Show, the mm. viewers get that. Okay. Yeah, I'll check it out and show them. Yeah, and Richie is great. He, he he's actually not very far from me, uh, just about ten miles from here. Okay. Uh, Richie has a lot of followers in the states because he's an Irish guy, and there's a lot of Irish people who follow him from from the states. Yeah. Richie brings in uh, some of the best people in their field and uh, interviews them, talks with them, okay? Mm. Uh, and so he's got a very broad spectrum of uh, interviewees, okay? Uh, and he's, he's a lot of lot of fun to listen to, you know? He, mm. he adds in a bit of a humor too. So uh, I would suggest that uh, our uh, viewers get acquainted with not only listening to you, me, but also some of these other other people who bring it, bring it from a different angle, yeah? And obviously, these are intellectual, intellectual people and in intellectual discussions. Okay, so it, mm. it will enhance their, enhance their broadness. Okay, mm. so going forward, people will need to be intelligent to survive. Okay, this is not only fitness but also intelligent. They have to be intelligent to survive. Yeah. Mm. Uh, in uh, Richie did a show with uh, somebody. Uh, well, it was a telephone call, and he allows a few people to call in, and he, he gives them like five to ten minutes to talk about their issues so uh just on the last one somebody called in and who lived in spain for a long time i believe he's still living in spain so he gave an outline of the future uh, of the future of mankind okay mm -hmm. and and he got it from another guy who passed away who told him what would be happening now uh, about 20 years ago 20 to 25 years ago okay 
and this the other guy was also a very highly educated uh, imperial college uh, student in, at that time hmm. he he uh, laid out what would happen to the banking industry the 2008 collapse and what would happen to the world okay so this guy was mentioning all of this in Richie, Richie Allen's show now the reason i'm i'm uh, referring our viewers to that is that he he mentioned that uh, uh, the way it's going to turn out is going to be your worst nightmare multiply that by 100 okay mm-hmm. okay now uh, sheikh imran uh, and I'm, i'm sure you've done that many times uh, reminds us that in akhir zaman people will run for the mountains to take cover okay also a person passing by a grave will want that he he is a is a, a resident of that grave rather than be on the world because of the misery unfortunately unfortunately we we've entered that time now okay mm-hmm. we can't hide no more yeah and the sooner the people get a, get a grip of this okay and start to prepare the better off they'll be yeah uh, we can't we can't hide and, and duck and dive on this this is the truth and the reality yeah so uh, if i if i just said that okay the prophet says that so one might a muslim might say well okay this is not the time now maybe another 100 years later okay yeah he might say well okay we we know the prophet is sadaqa rasulul karim our prophet told the to spoke the truth we don't doubt that but it's not applicable now it's going to be applicable 100 years later well i've get, i've brought in this uh, i've cited this other gentleman from which allen's show just to shed light that it's not we're not saying we're, we're not the only one who's saying this mm. other people are saying this now too yeah mm. so uh, just today just today uh, uh, i i forwarded to a friend of mine okay uh, and in uk they have laws now uh, that they can they can demolish your homes okay based on based on the uh, accusation that there's covid in that home okay we need to demolish it uh just bulldoze it like they've done in uh Gaza and then Palestine okay we need to demolish this area because there is suspect suspicion of covid rising in this area okay mm. so this is this is where the whole thing's going okay um um uh, in australia they can go in your doors without warrant and just uh, do as they like okay so this is where where we're going with all of this so the future is uh, is not a good one i'm afraid uh except for those who who know what's going on and do what they can to get around the system okay mm. and and i think they'll have a good time doing that yeah they'll find more joy they'll find more satisfaction okay doing that because mm. that is the real life that is the true life yes yes so for example going out to the country okay living living your life uh, uh uh as much as possible detached from the city life or the ghetto life okay that's a, that's more of a meaningful life than this uh artificial life that that people have got used to yeah uh you know we don't have uh meaning be- behind relationships now okay we don't know our neighbors we don't talk to them uh uh we, people are chasing after dunya and not even properly okay watching watching a lot of garbage that comes to the tv well go in the country look for allah worship allah find a like minded people have good relationship with them establish yourself firmly on the ground and have a good time doing it and worship allah okay so there's a lot so going forward i i actually think um, there's a guy there's a guy in the states called gregory manarino okay mm. they call him the they call him uh, the uh, uh the robin hood of wall street okay now i i follow gregory for the last 10 years yeah mm. he's a he's a market guy okay he follows the stock market daily okay and a very genuine and honest and uh, very okay. robust person okay so gregory manarino um um I forgot the track why i mentioned it you know people should people should listen to him okay uh, uh, so he talks about uh you know where the future is going okay for example with all this uh, money printing okay trillions of dollars that are being just printed with a blink that's devaluing devaluing people's lifetime savings okay people need to get a grip of what, you know what's happening I mean, otherwise they're going to be taken for a shock yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so um there you are so the solution that you're giving us is that uh, start 
taking steps, even if they're baby steps, but you have to start now because it's really getting to that point where you can't wait. You need to start now with whatever you have, start taking baby steps to get into the countryside. And uh, what I would add to that, if you can have a jama'ah, you ha don't do it alone. Do it with a group of Muslims. Do it with a group of Muslims. Choose an emir. Make, you know, make a plan and get out of the city. Get out of the cities. Uh, if you don't get out of the cities, uh, you, you won't be able to protect Islam. You won't be able to protect the next generation. And uh, you know what the Prophet said, that things will heat up to the point 99 out of 100 people will die. And uh, so... Yeah, can I just interrupt here? Uh, that, that thought has come back to me why I mentioned Gregory Manorino. Uh, this is you just you just mentioned uh, the 99 out of 100 will die. Okay, now Gregory Manorino he's been saying this for uh, you know, for a while. Um, you see, the world population. If you plot a graph, okay, if you plot a graph on the uh, uh, x-axis, okay, uh, the, the 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 growth of the world population on the x-axis, okay. On the y-axis, if you put the uh, death of the world, right? So what's happened? Uh, the the uh, it's gone up like a hockey stick, okay? The the debt and the global debt and the uh, world population, okay? So we have now, for example, in the states, you have uh, uh, about th close to thirty trillion debt, national debt, okay? Now the global debt to GDP ra ratio is over one hundred, okay? Hmm. We are consuming 100 times more than, than what we can produce. Hmm. Yeah? Now, debt, basically, debt means you're just borrowing from the future to sustain the current. Okay, So you borrowed money from somebody to sustain yourself now. So as hmm. humanity, what we've done, we've borrowed from the future to sustain our present. Okay, Now, this cannot indefinitely go on because you cannot live indefinitely on debt. Hmm. So Gregory Manarino points out that when this debt bubble bursts, okay, and this is going to be the uh, crisis that we're going to, the monetary crisis. Okay, and probably we're looking at probably six months to twelve months before the whole thing explodes. Okay, when this debt bubble bursts, okay, the population will cease, uh, you know, drop with it. Okay, so it will just fizzle out, right? Uh, because it will come to it will come to uh, the masses chasing after few resources. Okay. Now, the the, uh, uh, the United Nations, okay, um, they came up with, uh, these are treacherous organizations. Nevertheless, we have to listen to, it's like listening to the shaitan, you know, you have to, you get a bit of information listening to him, okay? Why why discard that if he's giving you some good information, okay? Yeah. So, United Nations came with a report uh, about three or four months ago, and they said that the, there's, there's far mind developing in, in Africa, okay, possibly in Asia too. I talked to the brother brother-in-law of mine uh, about a couple of months ago, and he said, "Look, I can see there's palm oil developing in Bangladesh." Okay, mm. my my sister was telling me a few days ago during Eid al Adha that uh, there's a serious uh, poverty here. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Said, what used to happen? Uh, you know, small farmers they they'll have a half a half an acre land or an acre of land. Okay, so he can plow it on his own. So two or three other people would come to him and plow it together. And then they would share the crop, and there you are. They, they used to sustain themselves like this. Now, because of this fear of this disease, okay, they're not coming together to, to produce. So production is uh, down substantially. Hmm. There's, there, there's production substantially down in Africa. Okay, so the UN came up with a report that uh, we're going to have a, a famine uh, of a biblical nature in size. Okay, hmm. now that might wipe out a billion people. Uh, on, on the globe, okay. So there's different indicators pointing to the same thing. Right, right. There, that's that, the truth. Yeah, that's the fact. That, there are many that, indicators. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming from different angles, okay. Yeah. So uh, and and the absolute is obviously what the prophet says, okay. Uh, that that's the absolute. I mean, that's just a confirmation of what what we're observing. So uh, people cannot be in denial of all of this. You know, people cannot be in denial. So with that said, you know, the, the question is, okay, are we in Akhirul Zaman? So I think that's a big question that Muslims are not clear about either. Even though they see the tall buildings, and even though they see children more disrespecting parents than ever, I think, in history, from what I see sometimes. Uh, even though, you know, and, and uh, 
even though you see all these signs, but I think it hasn't clicked that we're really in Akhir al zaman and, uh, and, and, and once that clicks that, okay, we are in end times, information being set, uh, given to us is deceptive. Once certain things click, then you can begin to see what the picture really is. And so, uh, you know, so I, I just wanted that I'm talking about this because I'm more and more concerned about how the average Muslim is not, the things are not clicking in their mind. And so this is uh, a concern for me. So, inshallah, uh, I think uh, I have to get ready for Juma, and uh, I don't know what your, what time it is at your place, but uh, inshallah, it was so great. Inshallah, we will have another session very soon. Uh, and inshallah, I ask everyone, please definitely, you know, we have to, you have to take information from many different sources. This is a part of what we have to do. We have to network, right? So you're listening to the, this sheikh and this brother and that brother. Then that, if you're only listening to one sheikh, then you, you become uh, kind of like you only see that one perspective. We don't want that. We want, we don't want celebrity scholars. We want the average Muslim, like if, uh, if our brain intelligent power is let's say 40 out of 100 if you keep listening to the same person it'll stay the same way right but if people are listening to you they're listening to me they're listening to uh, Sheikh Imran Hussein there you may disagree with all of us in some points and that's okay but we want to raise the conversation from 40 to 50 to 60 to 70 that's it's something that just has to be done uh, in order to cr create the overall awareness for the for the Muslims so, um, okay, inshallah, thank you so much for coming to my show. Uh, and inshallah, inshallah, this will not be the last, if Allah wills. And um, I'd appreciate, Sheikh, if you put it under your uh, uh, video in the link. Uh, if, they, if they type in my name, Dr. Muhammad Yahya, uh, that, 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 will take them, that should take them to my channel. Okay. And uh, uh, if you listen to me, I'd be grateful. Uh, uh, I'd... I'd I'd rather have uh, I'd rather have you know 300 intellectual uh, people on my you know listen subscribing to my channel and listening than 30,000 useless uh, useless people. I'm okay with that. You know. Absolutely, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. because um, uh, no matter which way you look at it, uh, there is going to be a human culling. Okay, and I don't see uh, you know look, uh, they've uh, our Muslim world has been obliterated. Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, Syria, Philistine, Lebanon, Lebanon, many of the African and countries. the others have been bought out. So they, yeah, right, right, right. you know, but, they've been bought out. So either bought out, and right. then other like Imran Khan in Pakistan, like uh, Erdogan in Turkey. So it doesn't leave us with much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm I'm saying that many of the ones that we've mentioned here just now. We've seen a drastic uh, reduction in population, meaning that mm. our people have perished. And with this new culling that's going to uh, take place, uh, there's, there is no doubt that many Muslims will, will go through that process, unfortunately. Okay. Mm. So uh, people get start better, uh, you know, getting their act together. Okay. Yes. Uh, mm. Allah is not saying that you don't do nothing and just depend on me. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, people need to uh, start opening up their mind and start asking questions. What's happening? It's very important. Yeah. And like you said, you know, turning to the right uh, source of information. Okay, very important. All right, Jazakumullah Khairan. Yeah. Wa Jazakumullah Khairan. Jazakumullah Khairan.